Okay, in this video, we are going to actually start writing um, some proofs. Um, the top of your page looks like this. I just don't want you to get ahead of yourself. Um, I want you to write down or think about some steps that you should take before you start writing your proof, okay? So the first step is take the given information and mark it in your picture. Um, I would write this up here at the top of your page where there's a little bit of room to write. There's only four things you're going to have to write. So take the given information and put the tick marks on any sides that are congruent, um, the arcs on any angles that are congruent. So that's step one. Step two is to ask yourself, is there anything else that can be marked? Is there any vertical angles? Is there anywhere where the reflexive property can be used because the two triangles share a side or an angle? Number three, you've got to figure out which one of the theorems can you use to prove that the triangles are congruent. And then step four, you want to write that theorem somewhere in your picture away from where your proof's going to be. So I would write it like at the top of my page over here. Um, you're going to use that theorem as a to-do list as you write the proof. And that's going to make sense as I do a couple examples here. Um, so these four steps are a good place to start if you are confused as to what to do. Okay, so for these proofs, I've already filled in or made the T-chart, and wrote statements reasons, filled in the first step because I was trying to save some time. But you have to write statements reasons at the top of each one of these two column proofs. You have to number the statement and the reason so I know that this statement goes with this reason. And almost always, the first step is going to be the given information. Now, it's possible sometimes in proofs they will um, separate the given information. So this would be step one, and this part would be step two. So you'd have another step here, and then number two here would be given. But um, that's just a matter of style. I prefer if it's all together. Um, so that's that. So we have right here, I said the first thing to do is mark the given information in the diagram. So JK is congruent to NM. JK is congruent to NM. And this is the first time I, I wrote this part, but I haven't thought about how this proof is made. So you can kind of, I'll kind of go through my thought process on how to, how to write this. Um, the next thing, it says JL is congruent to NL. So JL is congruent to NL. So it looks like that. And then L is the midpoint of KL. Okay, sorry about that. My dog thinks that um, strangers are trying to invade our house, but it's just the next door neighbors coming home. Okay, so I have the picture marked with the information that they have gave, given us in the given. Now I have to ask myself, which one of the theorems would I use to prove these triangles are congruent? So all the sides are marked. So this would be side, side, side. Okay, so that was, we've done one, two, there wasn't anything shared, no vertical angles. Three was which theorem will you use to prove? That side, side, side. And the last one was use the theorem as a to-do list as you write the proof. So what that means is if I look at the information that I have in the proof so far, I want to ask myself if I've already proved that there's a set of sides, a set of sides, and a set of sides congruent. So this first part here, I said that there was a set of sides congruent. So I can actually mark out one of the S's because I wrote it right here. Then the next one, I said another set of sides was congruent. So I can mark out another S. Okay, then this part is how we knew that the last set of sides was congruent, but I didn't explicitly say that those sides were congruent. So I need to make another step saying that this makes two sides congruent. So if L is the midpoint, it makes these two sides congruent. That's going to be my next step. KL is congruent to LM. And the reason that it's congruent... Hold on. Okay, hopefully it's quiet now. That time I think she heard a leaf flutter to the ground. I put her in timeout upstairs in my daughter's room. 
Um, okay, so we know that these two sides are congruent because of this line. Um, we, because L is the midpoint, I told you in a previous video of, that if there is a word, a geometric word in the given information, your next step is usually the definition of that word, and that's what's happening here. So those two are congruent because that's what it means to be a midpoint. So definition of midpoint. And feel free to abbreviate. As long as I can figure out what you're trying to say, you'll be fine. Okay, so we have explicitly said that these two sides are congruent, so I can cross off the last S. As soon as you have everything crossed off over here, you can say that the triangles are congruent. So our step number three is going to be, and they've already named them out for me up here, so I don't have to worry about lining up corresponding parts. So triangle JKL is congruent to triangle NML. And the reason is side, side, side. And that's the end of the proof. And to remind you, you can either write, and you don't have to do this, QED at the end, which is Latin for quad erat demonstratin, which is I've, I've proved what I set out to prove. Or you can draw a box. I usually draw a box, meaning shaded in. It's just a fancy way of saying the end in math. Um, so that's it for this one.